Hey friend, what's up? Welcome to my channel again. In this wonderful video, we were going to talk about the difference between the TCP versus UDP. Don't go far, stay there, you're gonna be surprised with a lot of new good news. For those that are very new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, and share. So let's get started. Yo, first of all, what does TCP mean? TCP meaning Transmission Control Protocol is a communication standard for delivery data and messages through network. TCP is a basic standard that defines the rule of the network and the internet and is a common protocol used to deliver data in the digital network communication. What is TCP used for? That's another question people are asking. TCP enables data to be transferred between application and device and network and is used in the TCP IP model. It's designed to break down a message such as an email into packet of data to ensure the message reaches its destination successfully and as quick as possible. The TCP IP model consists of several types of protocol, including TCP and IP, address resolution protocol, which is ARP, internet control message protocol, ICMP, reverse address resolution protocol, RARP, and finally, user datagram protocol, UDP. Some examples of a TCP is including P2P sharing method like File Transfer Protocol, Secure Shell, SSH, and Telnet. It's also used to send and receive email through internet messages, access control like a EMAP, or post office protocol like a POP, and simple mail transfer protocol SMTP. Then what is UDP? UDP stands for User Datagram Protocol. It refers to a protocol used for communication throughout the internet. UDP is used when communication are time sensitive. For user, it's better to have the overall transmission arrive on time than wait for it to get there in the near perfect state. For this reason, UDP is commonly used in voiceover internet protocol like VoIP application and so many other stuff like uh, gaming, uh, voice calling. UDP results in speediest communication because it does not spend time forming a firm connection with the destination before transferring the data. Because establishing the connection takes time, eliminating this step resulting in a fast data transfer speed. However, UDP can also cause data packets to get lost as they go from the source to the destination. It can also make it relatively easy to, for a hacker to execute a DOS attack. In many cases, TCP, which is Transmission Control Protocol, when data is transferred across the internet, it not only has to be sent from the destination, but also the receiving hand has to signal that it's ready for the data to arrive. Once both of those aspects of communication are fulfilled, the transmission can begin. However, with UDP, the data is sent before a connection has been firmly established. This can result in a problem with the data transfer and it is also present an opportunity for ACA who seek to execute those attack. Then how does UDP work? In comparison to other networking protocol, the process behind UDP is fairly simple. A target computer is identified and the data packet called datagram are sent to it. There is nothing in place to indicate the order in which the packet should arrive. There is also no process 
for checking if the datagram reached the destination. As a result, the data may be delivered and it may not. In addition, the order in which it arrives is not controlled as its TCP is the way the data appear at the final destination may be glitchy, out of order, or have a blank spot. Our application for use for UDP. UDP is used for straightforward request response communication of a relatively small amount of data, eliminating concern regarding controlling error or flow of the packet. Multicasting because UDP work well with packet switching. Routing update protocol such as routing information protocol. Real-time application in which the information need to be delivered quickly and smoothly. The follow implementation is where it's useful in transfer layer protocol. Since we explained clearly what is mean TCP and UDP, let now make the difference between both. So see on this table now, we're gonna put the difference and advantages in terms of like a, which one is better and which one is not. But to be honest, it's still 50-50, but I'll let you check out and read the all both sides of TCP and UDP to decide which one you think is more advantages. To summarize our definition and our differences between the UDP versus TCP, what I can say about the TCP is really different in that it requires a handshake between where the data originated and where it's added. So that means sync, sync, and arc, arc, which is the communication they're using for that. They call it three way handshake. This makes TCP more reliable than UDP. In the course of the TCP communication, the data can only be sent along after the destination and the source have been formally linked. So with UDP, because no link is required, the data can be sent right away. Another difference between TCP and UDP communication is that with TCP, the order in which the packet needs to be sent is confirmed before the transmission begins. Also, TCP provides for the confirmation that the packet arrive as intended. In the event that the packet does not arrive, TCP detected that is needed to be sent again. UDP, in the other end, does not require any confirmation, checking, or resending. If an application uses UDP, the user assumes the risk of error, the data not reaching its destination or be duplicated. The reward for accepting the trade-off is better speed. UDP itself is not necessary to blame for the data lost. The information in the header is sufficient to get the data where it is need to go. And the current the, the logical order of sending of the datagram should keep them in order. However, the majority of the network router are not capable of arrival confirmation or packet ordering. Data packet can get lost or duplicated. TCP account for this weakness in most network router by making sure data get where it's going and in the right order. Yes, this is the end of our video. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share. Other than that, I hope this video was very good and useful for you and thank you for watching and see you to the next episode of cybersecurity videos.